<clears throat> All right, we're gonna get this afternoon started here. We've got some friends filing in from the waiting room. Hi all, welcome to the fifth briefing in the Women's Empowerment Lunch and Learn series today with our partner in Haiti, Juan Jose. I am so thrilled to share this program with you and particularly to introduce the extraordinary team of women that lead this organization who you will hear from very shortly. Uh, we have a great and informative program for you over the next 45 minutes. Um, and we're looking forward to taking you on a little journey to, to Haiti where you can meet some of the women clients who have benefited from Foncoze's programming. And specifically, you're gonna learn more about the Boutique Santé program that Women's Empowerment has supported since uh, 2016. So we have 45 minutes together here today. Those of you who have joined us on our other briefing calls know the format. Uh, we're going to hear directly from our partners and um, take that little journey I mentioned and save 15 minutes or so at the end of our time together so that you can ask questions directly of our special guests. And you can do that at any time in our program by entering your question just here in the chat feature or hang on to your question and uh, pose it directly to our guests um, when we get to that, to that period. So as you all know, uh, women's empowerment partnerships are managed uh, with a, the help of our partner liaisons who play a vital role in keeping us connected to our partners, sharing information, sharing their progress, um, understanding the challenges they face and working closely with them to make sure that we're able to inform you, our wonderful supporters, um, about how things are going on the ground. And Christy Hendrickson uh, is a member of our board of directors and has served as uh, Women's Empowerment's liaison to Foncoze since the inception of our partnership in 2016. She has traveled to Haiti and um, met a number of the clients and the wonderful leadership team at Foncoze. And um, she is going to share some information with you about, um, about the Boutique Santé program and, and her experiences. So with that, it's my pleasure to turn it over to Christy. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to give you first just a little brief background on Women's Empowerment's partnership with Foncoze. Women's Empowerment has partnered with both Foncoze and Boutique Santé since May of 2016. Foncoze was initially founded, though, in 1994 as a nonprofit with the mission to provide the tools, both financial and non financial, to Haitians, focusing on women to help lift themselves out of poverty. In 2015, wishing to address the lack of access to basic healthcare services in rural Haiti, Foncoze took advantage of the infrastructure and relationships they had developed over the previous 20 years to establish Boutique Santé. With Boutique Santé, they started delivering healthcare services to the rural poor. They began training successful microloan clients to become community health entrepreneurs also known as CHAs. The CHAs sell over-the-counter health product, healthcare products, including subsidized nutrition products and provide basic health screening and health education to their local rural communities. In January of 2018, six members of Women's Empowerment, including our current president, Debbie McGraw, and myself, had the opportunity and pleasure to visit Haiti and see for ourselves the incredible impact both Foncoze and Boutique Santé are making on the lives of poor Haitians. One of the most charming people we met, you'll see here in this picture on the screen, was Leon. Uh, Leon is both a solidarity group leader and a Che. She demonstrated for us the Boutique Santé teaching manual that she used each month to teach her health classes to the rest of her solidarity group. She was also doing monthly mal malnutrition checks in children in her community. 
She said she felt great pride in teaching and likes it that the other members call her nurse. She actually, at that time, she had six children and her oldest daughter was in a school training to become a nurse. In addition, as uh, well, on this same trip, we not only met all the impressive Haitian staff at Foncose, but we were fortunate to have Mabel Valdivia, the executive director of Foncose USA on that trip with us. So now I would like to introduce Mabel who will in turn introduce the other phone calls a team members present on this call. Mabel. Hi, Christy. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us uh, be part of this um, briefing with you today. We're so grateful for the partnership that we've been able to establish with Women's Empowerment. Um, we are thrilled to be able to be carrying out the services that we're carrying out and bringing to our clients in Haiti in partnership with you. And for me personally, it was so special to be able to take my first uh, trip as executive director of Franco Jose USA to Haiti together with, with your team, with Debbie and with Christy. It was really meaningful and I remember it um, very fondly as one of my very first experiences um, at Franco Jose USA. Today um, on this call, my colleague, Natalie Park, who um, is liais the liaison in my office that works directly with um, women's empowerment is on the call, as is um, Florence uh, Jean-Louis from uh, the foundation, the Franco Jose Foundation in Haiti. And Florence is um, amazing in a word, um, but there's so many other more um, wonderful things that I could say about her. And she heads up all of our health programs, including Boutique Sante. And so these amazing women are gonna be able to share very specific on the ground information about our program, how it's happening every day, and also how we've been impacted by the COVID pandemic in 2020 um, and how things are uh, also working in Haiti over the last uh, few months as there's been um, transitions in power or desires for transitions in power and how Franco Jose has been kind of maneuvering and managing through all of those changes. So thank you again for having us. It's a pleasure to be able to be partners with you. And at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Natalie and Florence. Great. Thank you so much, Mabel. And uh, yeah, greetings, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, it's such a pleasure to connect with the women's empowerment community. And it's really an honor to share with you a bit about our work. Um, I'm going to start my presentation with an overview of Font Jose and then get more into the weeds about the Boutique Sante program that Women's Empowerment has been supporting. Um, Mabel also mentioned that our colleague, uh, our colleague Dr. Florence Jean-Louis is on the call as well, and she'll probably chime in, um, especially to correct me if I make any mistakes, but um, specifically to answer any questions that you might have. Um, she's in a very good position to be the one to do that. So as Christy said, Foncose's mission is to provide the financial and non-financial services to empower Haitians, primarily women, to lift their families out of poverty. It is a mission that is very much in line with that of women's empowerment, focusing on investing in women to elevate their families and communities. Foncose is a family of three institutions that work together to achieve our collective mission. Foncose USA, where Mabel and I work, is a 501c3 partner providing fundraising, technical assistance, and outreach on behalf of two Haitian entities, Service Financier Foncose, a microfinance institution, and the Fondation Colles des Paul, which is a Haitian nonprofit entity, and that's where France works. We are most well known for the microfinance services of Foncose Financial Services, or SFF, 
SFF is the leading microfinance institution in Haiti, and it has a double bottom line. It aims to lift families out of poverty while operating in a financially self-sustaining manner. SFF offers loans, savings accounts, money transfers, currency exchange, and it has a payroll processing service. SFF has nearly 50,000 borrowing clients nationwide. And on this slide, you can see a, a snapshot of our client's profile. 94% of our clients are women, 70% are food insecure, 48% live on less than $2.50 a day, 61% are engaged in agriculture, 54% can read or write her name, and 85% live in rural areas. Now, as you can see from this map, Fonkose has a presence in virtually every region in Haiti. SFF has 44 branch offices throughout the country, which are indicated by the, the dark orange dots on this map. It's important to note that most of our clients are too poor and too isolated to make regular visits to these branch offices. Their tiny transactions are not worth the transportation and opportunity costs. So SFF staff, our loan officers, travel to client communities so that they can make most of their transactions. Twice a month, groups of approximately 20 clients meet in what we call credit centers. These are not formal buildings. A center might hold its meeting in a church or under a mango tree. We have nearly 2000 centers throughout the country and these are indicated by the pale yellow dots on the map. Now considering the isolation of many rural communities, this network is really unparalleled by any institution in Haiti. And it's this network of clients connected through centers and then through branch offices that enables both SFF and the foundation to reach some of the most remote regions of the country. And understanding how this network operates is really important to understanding our programs like Boutique Santé. The Foncose Foundation leverages SFF's network to reach our nearly 50,000 clients nationwide. Its programs include the following. First, it offers the health program that we're speaking about today called Boutique Sante, and that brings over-the-counter health products, services, and education to client communities through an innovative social franchising model. Second, the foundation offers adult education courses, ranging from basic literacy to business management to life skills that are all taught in a manner designed to empower rural women. Third, the foundation offers a comprehensive program to lift ultra poor households out of the deepest poverty. For 27 years, Fonkose has consistently delivered results in one of the world's most difficult environments. I've included some of our key accomplishments from 2020 on this slide. So last year, we enabled 165,000 clients to access financial services. We distributed over 86,000 loans, 521 families graduated out of ultra poverty, over 80,000 children were screened for malnutrition, and over 44,000 women participated in adult education classes. Now to make some of our work come to life a bit, I'd like to introduce you to a group of clients who call themselves Solid Women. Haiti is a difficult place, but you already know the story. What you don't know is us. How we wake each day with an idea that we can build a better life for us and our children. How we work together 
to build. We are the women of Tokoji, and this is our story. We are just five friends, each facing many challenges. Loza struggled to support her four kids on her own. She didn't have any money to keep her small farm going, and when the floodwaters ruined her harvest, there was nothing to eat. Mariette needed a better house for her family of seven, but she had trouble growing her small roadside shop without capital. Loan sharks charged her 20% interest per month when she tried to borrow, and she ended up back where she stayed. In sitting, she had no hope. She used to just sit and feel like she couldn't do anything. She couldn't move. But we had each other, and when we found Pokozi, we found a path. <laughs> Pokoze is a movement made up of thousands of groups like us all over Haiti. We unite with other groups to form solidarity centers where we receive assistance, education, and loans that we can use to change our situation. With these small loans, we can start and build our businesses and support our families. We've called our group Farm Solid, which means solid women because we are solid women. The first step is to become stable. Antonia got better me and have information for her music. Focus and make sure that all of Maria's children were in school. Seden lost her brother and sister along with much of her merchandise to the earthquake. But focusing gave her the support to survive. Then we began learning. Jocelyn never knew how to write her name, but working with us, she is slowly beginning to read and write. Antonia has a first big book and is now saving a little bit each week. And our whole group is learning how to build our businesses. With a loan from Focusy, Antonia has been able to build a small goods business with her mother. Jocelyn can now buy the supplies to create her home packs. And Lozelle can sustain and grow her home. We all support each other to make sure the loans get moved well. And when the end of the month comes, we can pay the money back. Being part of Pokose has changed our lives. Before, Lozelle's son used to be hungry. Now, she can feed him. Maria is expanding her house so her family will have a safe, clean place to live. And Seden can move now. She has hope. Our challenges continue, but we have Pokozi, and we have each other. We'll keep working this way, shoulder to shoulder. Great, right, so now I'm going to shift gears a little bit to focus on the details of our boutique Sante program. In rural Haiti, the mortality rate for children under five is 81 for every 1,000 births. Stunting rate is 22% for children, and only 23% of the rural population uses improved sanitation. The principal causes of morbidity in Haiti are preventable and yet the health services, infrastructure, and product market are poor. Accordingly, patients, particularly in rural areas, are faced with unreliable health services. Indeed, 75% of patients lack access to health products and services. They may travel long distances on foot to reach clinics and pharmacies only to find that staff is absent or the clinics are closed or products and treatments are unavailable. And so there is a real lack of incentive to seek care unless an illness reaches an, an acute level. And by then, an illness that may have been easily treated or prevented with over-the-counter medicine has reached a crisis stage. And of course, health education, screening services, and basic preventive care 
could also help mitigate this challenge, and yet they are inaccessible to the majority of the population. When it comes to our clients, they have repeatedly been giving voice to two challenges. First, according to a 2012 survey, 16% of clients who dropped out of SFS loan programs did so due to health-related shocks, including the medical and funeral expenses linked to them. Second, they consistently struggle with supply line challenges in procuring inventory for their small businesses. Insecurity on the roads means that they can't travel long distances to purchase products, or when they do, the risks are high. And because Haiti is heavily reliant on imports, they are subject to volatility in the flow of goods across borders. Boutique Santé has been Foncosé's response to these challenges. After a successful pilot in 2014, we began scaling the program, thanks in part to support from Women's Empowerment. Today, Boutique Santé is bringing preventive health products, services, and education to communities throughout rural Haiti. Here's how the program works. I mentioned that we have nearly 2,000 credit centers throughout rural Haiti. In each of these centers, Concose is training one of its microcredit clients to become what we call a community health entrepreneur, or CHE. Each month, a group of roughly 30 CHEs meets with one of Foncosé's registered nurses at their local branch office for three reasons. First, they receive trainings on various health topics that they then replicate in their communities. Topics include exclusive breastfeeding, pregnancy, reproductive health, and more recently, protecting against the spread of COVID-19, among other topics. Second, they learn how to conduct basic health screenings for conditions like malnutrition. And actually, if you look at the photo on this slide, you can see that the CHE is measuring the mid-upper arm circumference of this child, which is one way of testing for malnutrition. And then each CHE with her new nurse supervisor is connected to nearby health facilities so that she can refer patients as necessary. And third, CHEs procure over-the-counter health products from Foncosé that they can then resell in their communities in their boutique santé. This means that they're enabling reliable access to products like acetaminophen, antibacterial soap, alcohol pads, pregnancy tests, menstrual pads, water purification tablets, and oral rehydration salts, to name a few. Chase are already successful micro-entrepreneurs. What Boutique Santé does is give them an additional inventory and revenue stream for their small businesses. And to me, this third piece is one of the most exciting and innovative aspects of Boutique Santé. The way the business works is that Foncosé procures health products in bulk and resells them at roughly a 20% markup to Chase, who resell them with an additional 20% markup in their communities. The price that their clients pay is still competitive with the local market while not undercutting it. Because this model generates revenue not only for Chase but also for Foncosé, we can then take that revenue, reinvest it in the program. And by 2023, we expect that the sales of the health products will cover the core operating costs of the program, thereby helping to ensure its sustainability in the long term. By then, we will have trained 1,900 chains nationwide. So far, we've changed nearly 1,700 chains who are serving nearly 6,000 communities in rural Haiti. According to our research, 67% of community members near Chase take advantage of their services, suggesting that to date, this has improved the ability of about 3.8 million people to access health products, information, and services. And now because this is ever present on our minds, I want to share a bit about how Boutique Sante has supported the COVID-19 mitigation effort in Haiti. 
In March of last year, Juan Jose immediately began rolling out its COVID-19 training through its network of community health entrepreneurs. He trained and distributed masks to nearly 50,000 individuals. In delivering the trainings, they were taught to ensure that participants observed protective strategies, including limiting gathering sizes and adhering to distancing guidelines. And the image you see on, on the slide is from one of our trainings. And the, the word bubble says, there's a big virus called COVID-19. People can infect others when a sick person speaks, sneezes, coughs, or has close contact with others. Foncoze's chains were uniquely equipped to address COVID-19 through the Boutique Sante program. The inventory warehoused in decentralized locations throughout the country, thanks in part to women's empowerment support, meant that our chase enabled access to critical health products like hand sanitizer, masks, and hand washing stations during the early stages of the pandemic, when the country's lockdown limited the flow of products internally and across Haiti's borders. In March and April of last year alone, Chase sold nearly 7,000 washable masks, 200 hand washing stations, and 960 bottles of hand sanitizer. And as of March of this year, about 250 people have died of COVID-19 in Haiti, according to officially reported statistics. Now we're guessing that this number is a vast underestimate due to limited testing capacity and gaps in documentation. But what it suggests is that the worst fears for the pandemic's progression in Haiti have not materialized. That said, the shadow of COVID-19 has not yet receded in Haiti, nor in the rest of the world. And while Haiti seems thus far to have been spared the brunt of the virus, its economic and socio-political woes have deepened. And in fact, the socio-political situation is particularly concerning. The president's tenure is in question, and this, among other grievances, has led to massive protests and public outcry. On top of this, heavily armed gangs are exploiting the instability to terrorize civilians through violence and kidnapping. But even in these challenging circumstances, Boutique Sante, Florence and her team are managing to continue its great activities to the, the best degree possible, while also ensuring safety and security measures for staff, chaves, and clients. For 27 years, Juan Jose has persevered through political, economic, and environmental crises. And over the past year, Juan Jose staff and clients have demonstrated their tenacity in the face of COVID-19. And they will continue to do so in spite of and in response to the challenges that lie ahead. Our partnership with Women's Empowerment has certainly been helpful in the achievement of our results. Women's Empowerment has supported CHE training, as well as the costs of both transporting and procuring health products. Over the past five years, we have received over $164,000 from Women's Empowerment. There's a, a Haitian proverb that I'd like to leave you with. It says, Many hands make the load light. Breaking the cycle of poverty is a long, difficult struggle for our clients. We want to be there every step of the way to make that load easier to bear so that together, one family at a time, one woman at a time, we can end poverty in Haiti. We are so grateful for our partnership with Women's Empowerment International. Thank you. And before we end the presentation, I just want to give the opportunity for my colleague, Dr. Florence Jean-Louis, to make any remarks um, that she might have. Florence, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Natalie. You did a great work. You know the work better almost than I do. <laughs> Very good. Um, thank you. I just wanted to thank um, all you women that are helping us um, uh, implementing all these interventions with this uh, 
vision with this mission that we have to really offer um, enough, enough services to the women that we serve so they can um, get out of the poor conditions of life where they are right now, even though um, they are living through a very difficult crisis now here in Haiti. So thank you so much for still thinking of us, even though you are facing also a lot of challenges and difficulties from where you are. Thank you. Thank you, Florence, and thank you, Natalie, so much for that incredibly informative presentation. Um, we are anxious to ask your questions of our panelists, and we have a couple questions that have come in. And the first is from Christy for you, Florence, to tell us how these programs operated during the pandemic, and particularly about the malnutrition screening that has been such a big and important part of the Boutique Santé program, as well as the health education teaching. Uh, we can imagine during the pandemic, um, like so many other things, that was difficult. Yes, thank you. Um, we did adjust our protocol. Normally we do um, big screening campaigns with big social mobilization, but during the pandemic, after not doing any community work during two months, I think we stayed two months without um, community mobilization. Then we did, once all our staff and chairs were um, received their PPE, their, their protective equipment, we began to work back uh, again in the community. But this time we did the screening door to door. It means that um, the chairs, they did, they went from one house to the other they asked the mother with her child to come out of the house. So the screening would um, happen outside. They, they gave them a mask. And from there, they did take the me measure, but they had their hand sanitizers, their mask and everything on. Mm -hmm. Of course, it did decrease our num the number of families that we serve but it was the best way to continue serving while protecting the people we serve and our staff. Um, regarding the, the meetings and the trainings, we did it in little groups of five. So we really decreased the number of people that could attend a meeting or a training um, to be sure to, to guarantee the social distance. So that's what we did. It meant that we had to do more training sessions than before to cover the same quantity of person, but that's what we did. So in terms of having their training sessions once a month in one branch, they had one week of training session in one branch because they had little groups every day coming to the, to the same training session. That's how we adjusted. Wonderful. It um, has struck me and I think many of us so many times over the life of our partnership that this program is just so wonderful because it fills a vital healthcare need among Haitians while serving to generate income for the chase. So there's this, this cycle um, that, that benefits so many. Um, one of the things that that we're curious about and has been echoed here by uh, Jose Nuncio is a question about basic, basic screenings and in particular child immunizations. We're hearing more and more now about how basic screenings and basic healthcare and particularly immunizations are being delayed because of the pandemic. And um, there's concern now that there'll be a rise um, in, in some of the disease that may result from that. Are immunizations for children part of what Boutique Santé Chais do or are those covered by the health system? Where does that fit in? Yes, unfortunately we don't um, do immunization because we're really working with um, business women that have a lot of other activities that they do even if they serve within the program. It's only some days per, per month 
-hmm. And uh, normally in the Asian system, it's the health agents that, that do, they are paid on a regular monthly by in the health system and they do the immunization. But it is true that um, this has decreased because in the same centers that provide the vaccines, um, people were not showing off, et cetera, because of um, not quarantine or not wanting to take the public transport, et cetera. But we, what we do on our side is really in promote the vaccination, say, tell people how important it is and refer them really to the, to the health centers, but we don't do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And speaking of vaccinations, what are you seeing in terms of the availability and access to vaccine at this stage of the pandemic? Um, now I'm in Haiti, fortunately, because um, the pandemic has not hit us so strongly as for you. Um, activities are resuming to normal, even if we still take precaution. So um, I, I think that we will be slowly seeing um, levels of vaccination going up. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, you're certainly aware of many of the impacts here in the U.S. Uh, and one of those is the closure of our schools. And we have a question about whether schools were closed. Are they open now? What has that looked like? Because so many of your clients are, of course, mothers as well, who've been deeply impacted by the closure of schools and all of a sudden children at home. Um, let's say that um, it almost for the women that we serve in the rural isolated areas, it did not happen. The pandemic did not happen. I mean, we did not have rural cases. The cases that we had were in the cities. So even if some of the activities stopped in the cities, for example, I think that my children didn't go to school maybe um, for two weeks or so only. Um, in the rural areas, activities continued to take place. It, the, the matter was really for the people like us, like in my case, for example, who would go from Port-au-Prince to the rural areas. But uh, the activities taking place there and that did not depend on the cities still were taking place, the marketplace was open, et cetera, et cetera. There was no, um, the, the principal impact was not on the school, but uh, a lot of times on the, uh, the products that the business women did not have access to because the, for example, the frontier with Dominican Republic was closed all the trucks from the cities did not go to the rural areas anymore. Mm -hmm. So we have time for a couple of more questions. If any of you have um, things you'd like to, to ask of either Florence or, or Natalie. And um, in, in the meantime, we know uh, through our partnership that many of your chays are leading women who've already been uh, microloan recipients and have um, been with the organization for a while. And I'm just curious how the word sort of spreads about this program and how uh, an aspiring woman entrepreneur might connect with you and hear about this program. Not sure which one of you might <laughs> Do you want to answer? Um, sorry, Paige, are you are you speaking about someone in, in this country wanting to connect or? No, no, no. how your um, potential chase in Haiti would connect with the program. Are they hearing about it through word of mouth? Do you have marketing efforts to recruit uh, chase? Are they all coming through Foncoze's microloan program? What's the source of your, your clients? Yes, sorry, I did not understand it. Then I can't, <laughs> Natalie. Yes, um, 
most of the, the women in our program are business women who have a loan from the SFF, the financial services. So they are our principal platform. We're working to them and this is also what guarantees some durability and some um, longevity of the work. Even though now that we are growing a lot, we're thinking about maybe integrating other clients, other kind of clients to the boutique Sate model. But until now, it's really recipientaries from the SFF loans. Wonderful. So what we do is that we go to the branch where um, the financial services are and we, we, we organize a meeting where we present the program and we tell them anyone who wants to subscribe to the program, we will be here next month at this hour and we will begin with this group. Excellent. I think so, uh, this is Debbie. Uh, is there time for another question? Yeah, I think we have time for one more. Okay, so I know that you, you spoke about civil unrest and the problem with gangs kind of taking advantage of the situation now. Can you tell us how you guys are uh, making efforts to keep yourselves, uh, the staff, as well as the clients safe as you have this awesome distribution, which Natalie showed us? Yeah, um, those are really very stressful times. And this is not only in the cities as the COVID, but also in the rural areas, we are facing really security challenges with all these guns, those gangs. So um, we're trying to work with a minimum of security. We have, um, um, when we have to go out, we have to, uh, we have people on the roads telling us it's, if the roads are safe. We have, so we have a network of information telling us if the roads are, are safe at that moment. And uh, in the rural areas where we always didn't know exactly where are the principal problems, we have to pay sometimes to pass through a barricade and we have provision for that now. Um, when we go on the field also, we always go with additional cash, with things if we want, if we have to sleep out. Um, yeah, we have really a battery of, of, uh, of activities or that we do just to be sure that we don't have to face um, very difficult times. So we would not um, force a barricade, for example. If we have a barricade and we cannot negotiate passage, we go back and we sleep in a hotel until the road is open, for example. And uh, um, all our staff is, in, is instructed to do that. And um, we, um, just sent a memo today saying that if any of the staff is uncomfortable doing the work or going to the field, we cannot force them to do so. And we will manage the way we work with them because it's, it's really, I, I can tell you, it's really difficult this time. Sometimes we stay, we have to stay at home. Um, when we have work to do from home, it's still okay, but where when our work is something that we have to do on the field, then it really disrupts um, our activities and our results. But we go around and we do all that we can really to serve in a, on the best way we can, but always looking at the safety of also our staff and our chairs. Thank you so much, Florence, for answering those questions and Natalie to you for that comprehensive and, and really informative and inspiring presentation. Um, this partnership is certainly beloved by all of us at Women's Empowerment and 
um, we're just really gratified to be able to work with you and um, know that we're contributing to making a difference in the lives of these women in, in some small way. So we appreciate you, we thank you. And to all of you who've taken the time to sign on with us here today, um, you're wonderful. And we only are able to provide this incredible support to groups like Foncose because of you. Um, we are entirely dependent on your personal generosity and we just can't thank you enough for standing strong with us through this very difficult year. Um, we are going to be helping women around the world through what's being called now pandemic recovery and um, this is going to be a long journey so we appreciate so many of you who stepped forward last year in the urgent hours of the pandemic and who will be standing with us again this year as we try to support women through the recovery and stand strong with partners like Foncose. So we appreciate you and uh, wish you well. Thank you so much for being with us today. And we look forward to our next briefing, which you'll be hearing about soon. We've got a couple more to go. Wishing you a wonderful day. Be well and thank you so much. Thank you everybody, stay safe. <laughs> thank you, thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Natalie and Florence, for being here today. Oh, Thank you all, too. This has really been so special. It's such an honor. So thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, ladies.